del autor publicado en Harvard, Business Week, TechCrunch, VentureBeat y GigaOM es Larry Chiang. CS-183E Lecture Number 10. This is the introduction of it. It's a whopper. It's literally a standalone video, uh, standalone being uh, the operative phrase where literally this is the, the crux of the matter. So Lecture 10 is about interrogation and getting past the white lies that founders get told. White lies being uh, innocuous, uh, almost uh, uh, a, a, a softer lie, a polite lie, a white lie. So interrogation to get beyond the white lies that founders get told. So interrogation, when you say interrogation, you're gonna think one thing. Well, you should be thinking one thing, which is John Reed, the father of modern interrogation. So I take his life's work and I boil it down into this lecture, lecture 10, and then I combine it with all the teachings of Lean Startup, uh, Steve Blank's Get Out of the Building, uh, Steve Blank's Startup That Spiral, uh, Mark Suster's uh, No Need, No Trust, Mark Craney, from uh, A16Z, also similarly, no need, no trust, no momentum. In fact, both Mark Suster and Mark Craney have similar things to what my mentor, a different mentor, Bob Sutton, talks about. Now remember, this is not name dropping, this is mentor mentioning, massively different. So what you're gonna get out of CS183 E for Edit Lecture 10 is how to interrogate, how to get past the white lies. Because remember, you're editing a cadaver, you're working on a dead startup. So you're going to realize number one is that the founders of the dead startup, they were lied to and they proceeded with data, they proceeded ahead incorrectly with data that is incorrect because people gave them white lies. People told them polite things. Oh, you know, your startup seems really interesting. Uh, you should move forward. But what they should have been saying is something else. So this is how to interrogate. This is how to get to the core crux of the matter uh, with me, with you, with John Reed's content. I initially met John Reed uh, via a major Chicago department store that taught interrogation. And White Lies was the foundation for my company, Duck9, because a credit application, in short, in essence, is a form of interrogation. Where do you work? How long have you worked there? Are you lying about your income? Are you lying about uh, length of address in a certain zip code? Are you lying about a whole multitude of things that then get third-party data confirmed by Experian FX TransUnion. So these white lies need to be translated because you're taking a credit application in that you wanna do business and lend that applicant money. Now, set that aside because this very much parallels entrepreneurship because people as founders that you're talking to, you wanna to try to do business with them and they sorta of don't wanna do business with you, but you need to get to the heart of of even letting business model canvas work because you're gonna need proper and true feedback. And this feedback, I argue, is filled with these lies, these white lies, these half truths, partial truths, seven eighths truths, 90% truths. So that's the basis of my work uh, with interrogation and how we're gonna proceed forward. When I say the word cross-examination, what do you think or feel? like a lawyer, right? Or maybe like a police officer in the stereotypical movie cliche where there's two police officers in a room and they're interrogating the suspect and there's a cross-examination and confirmation of facts and trying to, to get at the sales prospect from a bunch of different angles. Sound familiar? Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the concept of cross-examination and it isn't in a closed room, it's in an open room. So let's call it open field interrogation. If you wanna write this down, uh, you should be taking notes on this. Cross-examination, open field interrogation. Open like opposite of closed, field like green field, uh, open field interrogation. 
So what you're doing here is you are trying to to go at your sales prospect from a number of different angles. And if you're a kid under 24, you're probably going to be going at your sales prospects via text message. And I laugh because I'm, this happens. You have to go at them via voicemail. You have to interrogate in the open field. You can't just sit them in a room. In fact, this is why sitting them in a room is going to be impossible because they don't want to sit in a room to get interrogated. They're going to feel like they're being interrogated because then lying to you is going to be that much harder, whereas over the phone, uh, it's a little bit harder, but over email, way easier because you're not able to, to lock them in and lock in their attention. So cross-examination is something that we're going to explore uh, in this lecture. When we as interrogators in the open field, we must take notes. We must take notes. Uh, there's a little notepad that I'm going to grab for you. And what you want to do is you want to take notes like you're a reporter. And these reporter notes are super, super useful. Aha! Here they are. So these notes are super useful. So you want to do, and this is a, got a product hunt sticker on there. You want to be able to take notes, okay? You want to be able to take notes while that person is talking and your pen will actually control them. Your, your pen will actually uh, slow them down or speed them up uh, depending upon what you want to try to have them do. So taking paper notes, it's a lost art. It's, it's crucial to this interrogation method because when you're a salesperson, when you're taking paper notes, you're actually building deal momentum because at, there's gonna be a point in time, you're gonna put your pen down and you're gonna slide across the table and you're gonna be like, will you initial this to make sure that our conversation is correct? Same thing with interrogation in a closed room where you're trying to elicit a guilty response. After you've elicited the guilty response, you need to get them to put pen to paper to have a written confession. That's the, the skill set that I'm imparting upon Stanford Engineering, imparting upon the entrepreneurship community at Stanford. As credit underwriters, we very much see the credit application as a form of interrogation. And that's why paper applications still work. But let's not turn this into a credit argument. Let's turn this specifically into a let's interrogate as deep as we can with the use of optional fields. Let me repeat this. So let's say you're at a table, uh, a sales promotion table. And then at the sales promotion table, you have name, email, address, cell phone number optional. So this is a lead generation form and it very much parallels a credit application because it's a lead and are they willing to submit themselves to be persecuted and prosecuted uh, as you, the founder, who's trying to sell them something. So the cell phone number being optional, if the person's really interested in the deal, they would very much give you name, email address, and cell phone number. So that's the process of using a piece of paper to interrogate that's about this big using a piece of paper to begin the sales prospecting slash interrogation process. I very much love the concept of interrogating and asking a person who their current uh, suppliers are and who their current mentors are, who their current educators are, and who they currently respect, trust, and listen to when it comes to their execution of their job. Now, these are all questions that the initial bankrupt founders did not do, did not ask, because it's, they just didn't. They didn't sell, they didn't promote, and they definitely didn't interrogate. Now, inside of CS183E edit lecture 10, you're actually trying to, to better interrogate and better uh, filter out some of, the, some of the sales prospects that they initially did not get access to. Of all the John Reed students, that he's talked to or mentored, I have to rank pretty highly up on his list. And that's why the application <clears throat> of interrogation techniques to Startupville is kind of cool. 
and it's done via something that I call mentor <coughs> mentor mentions per press interview mentor mentions per press interview and uh, it's also an example in uh, sports as well the Golden State Warriors very much also mentor mentioned per press interview as exemplified by Steve Kerr coach Steve Kerr my personal friend who within a 12 second window uh, mentioned Lenny Wilkins Lou Olson, Phil Jackson, and uh, somebody else, uh, where he's able to rifle off uh, so many mentor mentions. It, oh, Greg Popovich. <laughs> Being able to mentor mention uh, helps you interrogate where that person's coming from, where they are going. Carol Kinsey Gorman has a great video on how to spot liars at work. She's doing great work inside the Stanford Business School and what she's talking about is how to spot white lies, how to read body language and these are some of the basics for uh, when you're listening which is really what interrogation truly is, is a form of listening. So have a look at Carol Kinsey Gorman's uh, video on how to spot liars at work because it'll help you edit that cadaver that you're practicing on. Interrogation is how to spot liars while we are selling. How to spot liars while we are selling. And money is a great interrogator. Money puts pressure on people. Asking for sales puts them in an uncomfortable position to tell you a more detailed white lie versus, oh, we think we might uh, whatever. and. Some of these lies that get told are also in a different lecture, CS183S, which is the top 10 lies that sales prospects tell us. So money is a great interrogator and you need to use money and make money your friend. Make asking money your friend. This is definitely something that the founders of your cadaver startup uh, never did, which is money wasn't their friend. Money was their enemy. Time was their enemy. So using money as a great interrogator tool helps you uh, get comfortable asking for money and then listening for the lies that come because buyers are liars I didn't make that up uh, it's just true uh, it's part of sales training and that's the process of of using interrogation so check out CS 183 s lecture 10 the top 10 lies that sales prospects tell us there's a bunch of urban uh, myths and common lies that you'll find become very very incredibly patternistic and initially these things will seem like they're muddying the water to your understanding but that's what the practice of this is doing that's what practicing on a cadaver is doing is you're going to get the feel of how a person dodges. You're going to get the feel of how to push a deal forward using willpower. You're going to get a feel for how to push a deal forward after interrogating and coming at, getting at the truth, the truth of their pain points, the truth of you providing a solution that's probably already out there. Uh, CS183 Lecture 10 external API. Solutions are already out there. They're not executing them because their white lies have insulated them from being sold a solution which should work. This happens time and time again. The taxi industry doesn't buy software. People don't execute. And that's snarky, and I know I have that like grin, but this is what I see. And that's what you're trying to, to exercise these urban myths and you are going to to get super comfortable with with how a sales prospect lies to you and then the countermeasures for it interrogation initially it was what they don't teach you in business school uh, but that was back in 2010 when I tweeted it three years later Carol Kinsey Gorman brings it into the business school so that's what's great about Stanford is when you interrogate them hey why is there not edit inside of Stanford? Why is there not sales sequels promotion spinouts inside of Stanford? Stanford listens and then puts it there. If you see that tweet is from 2010, 
And in 2013, there's a great video inside the Simper Business School, how to spot liars. So good luck interrogating, good luck with CS183E, and reach out to me because I am very much available to help you uh, mentor you via my mentor, John Reed, father of modern interrogation.